Hi everybody, today we're going to be talking about using data to make bar graphs and pie charts. So the idea here is we want to create a visual representation of the data that's easy to read. Okay, first example, we have a list of test scores here and we want to use that to make a frequency chart. So first of all, we need to note that our list of data is sorted. So we've got it sorted from highest to lowest and we do list out all the repeats. If it were just jumbled up in order, the first thing an example might ask you to do is to sort your data and that just means put it in order from highest to lowest or lowest to highest, just sort it some way. Okay, frequency chart, what we're gonna do is every score that appears is gonna be on the left side. So 95, 90, 89, 85, 80, and then jumps down to 76, 68, 50, and 40. And we have a couple extra spaces, we just won't use those. And then what is gonna go on the right side of this frequency chart is how many times that score appears in our list. So 100 appears one, two, three times. So we put three. 95 is one, two, three, four. 90 is one. And why don't you pause the video and go ahead and try to fill in the rest of the frequency chart on your own. Okay, so we see 89 is three times, 85 is once, 80 is one, two, three, four, five. 76 appears four times, 68 is three, 50 is twice, and 40 is once. Okay, there's our frequency chart. And now what we wanna do is use that frequency chart to make a bar graph. Okay, so what we're gonna do is every test score is gonna be represented by a bar, and the height of that bar is gonna represent how many students scored that test score. So here we've got the number of students. Down here we've got the test scores. So let's think about what our units need to be on the left. Well the most any score appears is five so let's just have every row here represent one going all the way up to five. And we want to make sure that our axes are marked with what they represent and that our units are clearly marked as well. Okay, now let's go ahead and fill in our scores. So three people scored a 100. So I'm going to go up to height one, two, three. And there is my bar for 100. If you go back up and look, four people scored a 95. One person scored a 90. So we only go up to height one. And you should note, I'm making my bars just one unit wide. I'm not putting them adjacent to each other. It's just my personal choice. The idea is you just want the heights to be correct. You want them all to be listed and you want it to be easy to read. Okay, three scored 89. One scored 85. Five scored 80, so this is gonna be the bar that goes all the way up. Four scored 76. <clears throat> three scored 68, two scored 50, and one scored a 40. So we've got every test score that appeared represented. The height represents how many students got that score on the test. So now I've got really easy to interpret visual representation of this data. We can see where the most frequent scores occurred. Okay, now let's move towards making a pie chart. 
first question that we want to answer is what percentage of students earned a C? And remember, C is from 70 to, you know, 79.999999, less than 80. <clears throat> All right, so let's go to our chart and determine which ones were in the C range. Well, there was only one score in the C range, 76, and four students scored it. Okay, so there were four Cs, and we want to do percentage, so we want to know out of the total. And we can get the total number of students by going back, either adding the height of all of our bars or going back to the frequency chart, adding up our frequencies, or even simpler, just counting the number of scores in the list. All of those are acceptable ways to find your total. I'm just gonna add the height of all of my bars. So when we do that, right, three plus five, plus one, plus three, plus one is 85, plus five, plus four, plus three, plus two, plus one, and we get that our total number of students is 27. Okay, so percentage of C's, we do four divided by 27, write it as a decimal first, that's 0.148, 148 keeps going, and to move it to a percentage, well we move that decimal two to the right, and we're gonna round to two decimal places in the percent. So 14.81% earned a C. All right. Now, in a pie chart, what is the central angle of the wedge representing a grade of C? So pie chart, remember, it's a circle. There are gonna be these wedges representing different things. And central angle is that angle there. So we wanna know what should that angle be if we're representing the number of C's. Okay, and one thing we can do, well, we know 14.81% of our students got a C. So we could take the whole circle is 360 degrees and to find 14% of that, of means multiply, so we multiply it together. 360 times our percentage written as a decimal is going to give us, rounded off to two decimal places, 53.32 degrees. Okay, another perfectly good way to find it, you end up doing the same computation, but it's just thinking about it a different way. Well, percentage means it's really something out of 100. So 14.81 out of 100, well, let's set up our proportion. We want that to be equal to how much out of 360. So what you do, right, multiply the 360 over, and that is gonna give us 360 times 14.81 over 100 is our x. And when we do this, we end up with the same number, 53.32 degrees. So either one works. They end up doing the same computation. It's just which one is most intuitive to you to think about. And whichever one's most intuitive, that's the way you should do it. All right. Now we want to draw a pie chart representing the test score data. Okay. So we know that with C's, that wedge should be 53.32 degrees. And we need to know the wedges of the other ones. We'll go ahead and do A, B, C, D, F. So let's go ahead and do the computation for A. Well, if we go back up and look, eight of the 27 students got a 90 or above. We divide that out, eight out of the total of 27, it's 2963 or 29.63%. And we can take that decimal multiply it by 360 and we get 106.67 degrees. So there's for A, here's for C. Let's go ahead and do this computation 
4B. 9 out of 27 students scored in the B range, so 80 to 89.9999999. And 9 out of 27, well, that is 0.3 repeating. So we multiply that <clears throat> by 360, and we get 120 degrees. We already did C, so let's go ahead and move on to D. Only three students out of 27 earned a D. If we divide that out, that's 0.1 repeating. And then we multiply that by the 360 degrees, and we get 40 degrees. And the last one is F, and F we're going to assume is below 60. So 3 out of 27 students scored an F. Well, we just did that exact same computation. We know that that is 40 degrees. Okay, so what we want to do here is draw each wedge. I am going to draw them to the best of my ability using my tablet. And what I would recommend you do if you're drawing it by hand is draw a circle and get a protractor so that you can measure the angles and use the straight edge to draw them accurately. Okay, I am just going to do my best with what I've got. And I'm going to start with A. So A is 106 degrees. That is a little more than 90. So we've got it here. A's. B is 120, which is a full third of the circle. So it should be bigger than the A range, a third of the circle. And then I'm going to go clockwise around. So A, B, C. And let's see, C is 53.32. D and F were both 40 degrees. All right. So it's not quite dividing the rest of this into thirds. We need to measure out 53 degrees for... Uh, C's and then the last two it's divided into 40 for D's and F's and there is our pie chart of course if you were drawing this out by hand you would use a protractor to get those angles exactly correct that is it for today